Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 242. End of April. Summer's almost over. I don't know. September and summer? Ah, feels like the end of summer to me. These meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. What are we doing? Well, one, if you're here, say hi. We've already been chatting with Ron and Zach and Jacob. Giving Zach a little bit of a hard time as he tries to jump between keyboards and keep the typos to a minimum. Uh, what are we doing here? We're doing triage. And then we will do Wix 4 issue review, which is essentially triage of all the stuff left in Wix 4. And then we'll take questions and comments and things that uh, other people want to uh, talk about, like the answer to life, universe, and everything. Uh, I only have a certain amount of time for all those, so we'll see how far we get. In the meantime, let's go ahead and jump into the triage and V4 issue review. Bob, you ready? Arr, since we're going to miss Talk Like a Pirate Day. Oh, shucks. All right, here we go. Yep. Starting at the top. This has been triage before, and it is back for triage. It is. So, Bob, yours. Uh, sorry, this is number 6845. Including remote payloads in a package that is assigned to a container causes cab creation to fail. Something about adding an error to this case rather than trying to fix it. So I was looking at various spots, including the one Sean pointed out. Um, where I got to was a question of whether it's more generic than the specific um, issue title might suggest. Um, it occurred to me that all the payloads of a package, including the package itself, have to be of the same packaging type. Uh, but I admit some of the discussions that the two of you have had on the whole issue of remote payloads, well, I kind of tuned out. So um, I wanted to bring back to the peanut gallery and ask whether it's true if all the payloads in a package have to be the same uh, packaging packaging type. Um, if it is, then that's one way to fix the bug. And again, in a more general way than specifically checking whether you know an, an embedded uh, package has remote payloads. So well, I mean, oh, go ahead, John. There's only two packaging types. There's embedded and there's external. No. So this, if you do the code that I pointed to, that's making sure that if all the, if you assign the package to a container, then everything needs to be embedded. And I feel like that covers the case, unless I'm missing something. Again, not, I'm not sure that you are. I'm just not sure that I am not either. Um. If if a payload is said to be in a container, then it needs to be embedded. Sorry, say that again. If a container it sorry, if a payload is in a container, it has to be marked embedded to be put into that container. Uh, yes. It's odd. I'm, I'm trying to think of if there's any situations where you would say this is external, but still be in a container. No, that seems wrong. I guess yeah. I'm, the, the, the issue says that if a package is embedded, a remote payload of that package is an error. I'm wondering about the reverse, that you have a remote package, but the payload is marked compressed. I think that's possible. Um, and it also seems, well, I don't know. Is, is that something we should support? Theoretically, we could, right? I guess I don't see why not to support it, because you're going to have to add extra code to prevent that from happening. Well, I'm, the issue is to add extra code, so um, to prevent one case. I'm, I'm asking whether we should, I'm, well, like I said, I'm asking, is the specific 
message or the specific error case in the issue the only thing that we want to prevent? If the answer is yes, then okay. If the answer is no, then you know, then it becomes a question of you know, is the more general case interesting? It's weird. It would be weird to have a remote package and an embedded payload, but I don't think it's you know. Well, I think the case would be where most of the package, where where the bundle is compressed by default. Mm -hmm. So everything goes in the attached container unless right. you explicitly mark a payload as compressed equals no. Right. And maybe there's some random payload that you want to download instead of compressing it. I don't know why, but maybe. Yeah, that But that's that's the error case though. That's the error case in in the issue, right? No. No, not because they're marked external, it's not an error. Because this issue is where you oh, oh, author the external container yourself. It's not remote. No, no. External yeah. means not in a container. Right. It means a loose file. A uh, loose file is a well, different term. Um, no. So, so that's part of the problem, I think, is uh, embedded is definitely in a container. Um, external can mean loose file or remote. No. Oh, I I see. Um, external is very generic. It's basically not embedded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it, external means not embedded. Remote is a build time thing that says whether the file is available or not at build time. And and this is why the name has always been problematic. It it, it doesn't have anything to do with does it mean there's a download URL or all the I mean it adds some requirements because it's always external, but it, I keep using the same words that we already have for things. <laughs> I'm, uh, um, remote only means that we don't have the files when we're building the bundle. That's what remote, they are not here when you're building the bundle. It doesn't uh, okay. have anything to do with when the bundle is running. When the bundle is running, it cares about embedded versus external, aka where is it expecting to find the file? Mm -hmm. So this particular case is if it's embedded, then the build process wants to create a cabinet to put it all of the files inside that cabinet because that file is only created during the build process. And the issue is that if it's remote, it's not available at build time, thus the failure. So the that's that's why this makes sense here if it's remote not available during the build it means it cannot be embedded that's that's it and this issue is also only about when you explicitly author the container and you're saying i want this package in the container you can never get into this case for the defaults attached container Um, why is that? You can author a package. Sorry, you can author a payload as compressed equals no. I'm just saying for this issue, it's impossible to get cab creation to fail inside of the detach, uh, inside of the default attached container. Because? Because if you specify, uh, Compressed equals yes on a remote payload, that's a compile time error. The I'm thinking of the other case where it, the bundle's compressed, the package is going into the default attached container, and then that's, you offer a payload compressed equals no. Well, there's not really a concept of the package is going into the default attached container. Only payloads. In the end, only payloads are assigned to containers. Okay, but uh, bundle compressed equals no, compressed equals yes. A payload is marked compressed equals no. A remote payload 
is mark compressed equals no. Well, you're kind of assigning more meaning to the compressed equals yes on the bundle element at that point. Because the linker doesn't, that has nothing to do with the linker, but the linker is what's causing this bug where it's changing compressed equals no into compressed equals yes, because you assign the package to the container. Okay, so, okay, I'm still struggling with the higher concept. Is it legal to have a package with a non-compressed, a package that is compressed say, into the default attached container to have a compressed equals no payload. You can author that today, right? I, guess it, I mean, there's basically two ways to specify a payload should be compressed. There's the compressed equals yes or no on the bundle, the package, the payload. Mm -hmm. The other way is when you're authoring the container and you have a package group ref. And it's that that's what's causing this bug, is that package group ref is telling the linker, I want every single payload for all the packages in this package group to be compressed into this container. Right. The current code overrides what you might have authored. Yeah. So that package group ref inside the container is overriding the compressed attribute on the payloads or bundle or package. OK. But so. So I don't know whether we want to, I don't really want to disable it, like mixing and matching for the default attached container because that's more work for us. Okay, uh, but I'm, I'm back to the, to the question of whether, whether it should be allowed. Right now we're saying no. We're saying every payload must be compressed into the container. I hate the fact that we're using compressed in this way, but um, and of course that fails because they're remote. Um, should, but it would, uh, no, it's failing. Well, no, it's failing because well, the crash is because. It's remote and there's no source file. Right. We're saying that cannot be allowed, correct? Yeah, we can't crash. Well, I understand that. That's the easy part of the question. The harder part is, do we want to block the, the capability of having a package with most of its payloads compressed, but not all. I think we should allow that. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really interested in doing the extra work that it would take to prevent it. And V3 lets you do that. So it's also a backwards compatibility thing. Okay, so. I think it's the right thing too, more importantly. Okay, I'm, I'm really I'm really confused about what the bug is then. Obviously, we can't crash, so we can't force all the payloads to be compressed. We already throw a warning. What more should we be doing? I mean, this bug is about turning that warning at that code that I pointed to into an error. That's it? That's it. Oh. Uh, OK. And the fix being? The hard part was deciding whether we, was your question, basically, whether we want it to be an error or we don't want to just go back to the V3 behavior of um, keeping the remote payloads out of the container.
Okay, so so it's what? It's now an error because because you specifically told the bundle you wanted the whole package in the container, but you specified a package that has remote payloads. So you're giving conflicting information to the tool set and it can't handle that. But it could if it just skipped trying to put the payload into the container. But then the whole package isn't in the container like they asked for. Or did they ask for the package to be put into the container and it, some of its payloads to not be put in the container? How would you uh, how would you author that then? I guess is my question. If you wanted a remote payload for a pa for the case where a package and most of its payloads are compressed in the container. You have to go to every single payload you want compressed or the other way around. If you're the default of the bundle is compressed equals yes. And then you have to let it go into the default attached container instead of going into your own specific container. Why? Well, that's the only way to do it today. Otherwise, we're going to have to change how compressed attribute works, where instead of yes, no, you have to specify which container you want it to go into. Well, but if the, so the payloads are associated with the package, you tell Burn that you want, you tell Wix that you want the package in, in a particular container, and compress then becomes an override. That's how it works without containers. Without, sorry, without explicitly authored containers, right? You can have a package that's compressed equals no, like uh, the, Net, the NetFX Redist, right? You put the package in the chain. Well, actually, no, that's the default for the remote NetFX. You don't generally ship them because they're mostly not needed. That so, sorry. I bring that up as a case of, of, of compressed the compressed attribute having, you know, control over a default packaging. In the NetFX case, it's bundle compressed equals yes or default. But an individual package, the NetFX redist being compressed equals no. So that's a case where you said the bundle should be completely compressed and we use compressed to turn off that default. Yep. I don't know if you want to reverse our decision that we made last time and do a warning instead of error, that's fine. It doesn't make sense to me intuitively. But if that's the behavior we want, then that's fine. Well, I don't want, I, to be honest, none of this is intuitive. It's getting really hairy. I don't like the idea that we allow remote payloads in a package that's compressed. But the .NET Framework case is exactly the one why it exists. .NET Framework is defined as remote, it's external, you put it in your bundle. You want everything in your bundle compressed, but you're using .NET Framework. It's just a redist. You don't want that in your bundle, and that's the exact case. Compress everything that, except this that's thing. A package. I'm saying within a package, all of its payloads should be together. Ah. Uh. But I'm I'm fine with the extra um, capability, I guess, of mixing and matching at that level. Yeah, I agree. That one's a little weirder. Like the, the, the oh, it's case a lot on, weirder. Okay, the case on that is a lot more theoretical. I absolutely agree with that. But at the same time, we can allow it, and it will just work. It's like, okay, that's maybe that is useful. The case where I think of all the time is, 
I want to download a SQL database or like some large data file that I don't want to ship inside my bundle. So it's the one thing remote for something else to be installed. That's, for a package that's, that's never enabled. Or, or optionally or, sorry, enabled. Or sorry, yeah, R rarely yes. enabled. Right, Okay. right. It, it's that kind of scenario and it's theoretical. I don't have a real world case where I know where that happens, unlike the .NET framework we have. I definitely have a case where it happens. Right. Okay. So in that case, we want to continue to issue a warning and not try to mark the payload as compressed. I mean, I, we decided last time it was an error, but we can switch that to warning if you want. Well, I mean, it's a warning right now, right? It's yes, a warning it's a... and it changes the bit. Well, right, 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 right. I think the changing the bit is the thing that causes the problem. Right? Right. Changing a remote payload to embedded will never work. You're like, no, 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 you can't embed a remote payload. We don't have it. The whole point is we don't have it. You cannot embed it. The tool set is essentially shooting itself in the foot in that case. Yeah. And I think the question is, I, I think what I've heard, the question is, bundle compressed allows um, uh, packages, payloads in the chain to override the bundle's compressedness, for lack of a better word. It, in .NET Framework, it can be remote, can be external. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your bundle can be compressed. That's normal. And... I believe Sean was saying if you explicitly put something in a container by having a container than a package grip rep, then it should not behave the same as a bundle being compressed. You said put it in container, it's embedded, we should error if we find a remote payload because, well, you explicitly said put it in a container, containers are compressed, remote payloads cannot be put in explicit containers because, well, we won't have them. Where if you follow the bundle overall bundle behavior, well, technically speaking, we could just say, hey, by the way, you put this thing in your container, it has a remote payload, so that's not going to end up inside that container. Same as, in the case of a bundle, you mark this thing external, it's not ending up in your bundle. The question is, is it a stronger statement to say, put this thing in a container, and everything must be present. If you put it in a container, it must be present, none of that special remote or external file behavior is allowed. External payload view. <sighs> Sorry. In a container, if you say this is in a container, every payload must be in it embedded. Right? That's that's kind of the decision point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have strong opinions. Should I, I, I can see arguments both ways. If you say put it in a container, you said put it in a container, it's an error if you put anything that's not in there. It's like, well but I want the same behavior the bundles have by marking them. It's a container too, right? So I want the same behavior there. If it's remote, it's fine. And you can go either way. So the fix is don't change the embeddedness and then change, and then, then the second part is do we make it a warning or an error when that happens? When it's detected. I don't have a strong feeling. I waffle. The, w the way you phrase it makes me awful um is it a stronger statement to have a package group ref in a container yes that is a stronger statement than bundle compressed equals yes okay i think sean would agree with you based on what i've heard him say yeah yeah if so then that would be an error that would say remove the embeddedness and uh, change the warning to an error Okay. Yeah, I think that's the right way to go. All right. Cool. Woohoo! Onward. Okay. <laughs> and this was going to be fast. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, there's only two of them. Uh, no, there's 18 more, 14 more, whatever. Something like that. Uh, SQL error message is not informative when you're using SQL extension. Yeah, they want more detail in the error message. And I'm like, that would make, that would be great. Someone could go do all that. 
Yeah, except, you know, the truth is that error message, the healthy error message, contains no additional information. Well, sorry, it contains one little bit of information. The server was not um, down or not accessible? Couldn't connect. Yeah. That's the only useful bit of information. The rest of it is, you know, a paragraph on ways that you might not be able to connect. I, I um well, it does tell you that the provider can be cool. Anyway, I, fundamentally, I don't disagree. More error messages yeah, is good. Yeah. The error messages in the SQL API are complex, to say the mm -hmm. least. And mm -hmm. it would be great if someone wanted to go do all the work to bring them up and out instead of all the unknown error. I thought there was some attempt to get more detail. Yeah, this whole unknown error thing here, I think, is an attempt to get more detail out of it. Yes. But someone with more knowledge of the SQL API or someone willing to go dig into it would probably go there and get the actual, because I think you can get this. And anyway, so that, so I think, yeah. I, I think enabling the deutal logging for this custom action would probably get them what they want. Or it probably would at least say fail to connect. Yep, if mind. you could see the deutal logging, oh, right? Because deutal includes SQL util. Yeah, the SQL you have call, but yeah, I I don't know the I anyway. All I know is that there's extra code handling this error that was put in because we we got it from people and then that had a bug and so I had to go in and fix it and it had uh -huh. all this extra error handling or error message stuff to it that tried to add and in the end I, it doesn't surprise me that it came back with there's anyway. Yes, this would be great. Someone could do this. Someone could do this at any time. They could go in and make this better. So milestone, where to? Four X, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Four X. Do do do. Four X. All right. That would be great if someone wanted to do that. Because it is interesting. All right, we're gonna roll straight into some issue triage for at least another 15 minutes and see how far we go. All right, we left off at this core integration test host thing. The next one is support bundle automatic containering like in MSI, that's worded interestingly. Uh, number 6521, it is currently assigned to near. I don't think near is here, do we, do we, I guess, how about we just drop a message in this saying, hey, are you still planning to do this for four? Now would be a good time to get on that. Is yeah. it? Is it a good time? That's a good point. As <laughs> soon as I said that, I stopped. You're right. This probably doesn't go now, right? I'm, I'm saying, you know, a year ago we said we need a whip. Yeah. And. Yeah, you're right. It's, it, this isn't going in four. All right. Can it be done at 4x? I don't. I don't yeah, know. I think it could. It, it I mean, be broken. There might need to, might need to be something equivalent to media template. All right. All right. Well, I think. We oh, should... and that's actually in the original. Yeah. So I think I guess that's an ad. All right. Anyway, yeah. cool. Let's put it in there. Drop a message saying, "Hey, yeah, this will have to be post four um, at this point." Unable to build after updating to version 314.6567. This is about the ICES. Um, yeah, this is about the ICES. Um, I know you're I, I, I played around with this um, not that long ago. and You're going to take uh, it, care of it in four, right? Yeah, I, I basically I updated, the, um, updated some of the ICES, uh, but the merge module cube is still busted. So um, I'm, I kept it open, oh, well, like the comment says, just to yeah, take one last look before we ship. Cool. Cool, cool. Maybe update the title? Oh, it says that. All right. Uh, All right. Sure. Visual Studio 2019 locks output of project dependencies while building installer via Wix tool set. Hmm. I guess it'd be a matter of playing with this in Votive. This is Votive, though. This doesn't have to go in four, does it? Is it actually or is it Votive in this that's build? doing it? Oh, that's a good it, point. 
Could be MS Builder Visual Studio. Visual Studio says that lib is locked. Guess it could be or I guess it could be a misbuild. Doesn't have anything saying if it only happens from the command line here, does it? No. Whenever I push the rebuild button. But I guess it could be in our targets. Could it? I don't know. Um, things that we don't get this more often. Although maybe people don't rebuild correctly enough. I didn't look at the project. Like, is it using heat or something? And somehow it's holding on when it's harvesting or something? I don't know. Okay, fuck it. Uh, he said lib, right? That's a CS prog. So. That up, maybe? Okay. Yeah, there's a heat directory. Possible. <sighs> yeah, run all the tools out of proc. Yeah, that's probably the right answer. All right. I guess we'll keep it 4 and look at it. I'll probably look at it when we get past patching, see if it really works. All right. The Winget thing, I have bits and pieces of this. We'll take care of it. That's 6601. That will be coming, but it'll come very late because we have to have the real thing. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I, all right, so he's all right. So Zach says he's seen something before. So with just MS build. All right, we'll keep it around. All right, V4 theme util billboard display issues six six three five. Bob, you still gonna look at that one? Go get it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll leave it in my queue. It's you know, it's a bug fix. So okay. it's a sorry, it's a bug fix in an obscure area. Um, of theme util that none of our bootstrappers, none of the Wix standard BA bootstrapper themes use. Um, yeah, so it's not a priority for me for preview one, and frankly, we could ship Wix for without it. I think I'm it's... not. I'm not too happy with that because I gave poor re review re comments on that when it was merged. Like six I, years I remember. ago. I remember. And nothing's been done on that in six no. years. I know, but so this is the problem with having functionality that we don't use within Wix. I mean, if you're not going to fix it, I'm going to have to pull what you put in there. Why? I don't because think you it have to. It wasn't documented. It doesn't work. I have to pull it that doesn't necessarily follow it's uh, look like i said i'm i will keep it in my queue and i agree we talked about this before about the use of panels um you know I, i'm perfectly fine doing this i'm just saying this isn't a priority for me for preview one i thought everything had to be done by preview one yep then it's not a priority for me for wix 4.0 it's bugs Bugs could be fixed in 4x. Then I'll have to pull it. <laughs> I, I disagree with that. Does, it, does the whole thing not work, or is it a particular part of it not work? Does it blow up? It, like... it used to work. I built a, an extensive BA using it, but that was years ago. It allowed a lot of extra functionality that it's not that you weren't using. So I don't think it was the right way to do it. That's 
absolutely possible. Like I said, the panel idea was spiffy at the time, but it was probably overkill. Um, I'm I'm fine with the concept of of you know putting billboards back to allowing images only, for example. I don't know. I tried to get I tried to ask in the pull request what it was actually trying to do, and I never got an answer. And I asked for documentation, I never got documentation. No. So if That's I don't totally understand, a surprise, right? So if I don't understand what it's doing and it's not working, then I'm gonna pull it. <laughs> Again, that doesn't necessarily follow. There are plenty of things we can do, including saying, you know, this XYZ path does not work. Again, it did work. I used it. Now, if it decayed since then, fine. I don't, so I don't know what your use case was, so I can't even. It was to make billboards. I don't know. I'm just, it, this isn't. I don't want to handle all the bugs that are to come up when people then, try to use it differently. Then we add documentation. Then we add documentation. And don't. That... Sorry? Then don't. Don't handle all the bugs that come up. Well, that's also a fine option. I was saying we can add documentation saying, you know, this, again, XYZ doesn't work. That's fine. I mean, well, what, you know. what does work? Dude, I don't know. I, I wrote these BAs years ago. I used I used this, all right? So again, at one point it did work. So I trust you that it worked. And I just I'm trying to get you to tell me what worked. And Dude, then I It was years ago. I don't I don't remember. Images I wrote on BAs. the billboard worked, right? At least images on the billboard worked. That yes. worked. The panels thing I, I don't know. That seems I, to be the root. Again, I'll open I, have, so I would have to go that. back and look, and that has not been a priority for me compared to other bugs. Huh. Okay. And they're bugs. You know, they they can be addressed. Hmm. Can I just lose GitHub? Everybody can still hear me, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. No, that's good. Okay. I came back. Back. Go back. Just slow. Yeah, it was just I, slow. I can go look up what worked, and you know, I mean, if if that's, I don't know, useful, I can go back and and you know look up what worked. But again, this was years ago, and Dmutils had a bunch of work, most of which you did. We don't have to go, we don't have to rip it all out if it only works with images. To say it doesn't work with panels would be like, yeah, okay. So it, yeah, and and again, like I said, I'm perfectly fine if. We rip out panels and only support billboards with images because I know that we have a bunch of, of uh, we're going to have a bunch of problems with, you know, Z order in the billboards. But, you know, I added panels and they work. Now, it is entirely possible that the panels I used were themselves just images. Because I did have to do a fair bit of work. Um, this was this BA was like entirely. It was very graphics heavy, so it's entirely possible that I use panels just to be able to compose the pieces of the billboard. Again, I'd have to go back and look. If you know random controls in the panel don't work, okay, that's something we can document. Or so, even disallow. So I thought your whole pull request was panels. So if panels don't work, I want to pull them. And you said you're fine with that. So I guess that I'm missing. That was not the extent of. I, I did quite a bit more in theme middle for that BA. But I'm well, specifically talking about panels in billboards. If panels elsewhere don't work, then. We can absolutely talk about, you know, nuking the entire concept. And again, that's entirely possible. Okay, I was so... in charge of creating the theme 
at the same time, I was updating Femidal to take care of it. So, if you know, it's entirely possible that I missed, you know, a completely logical code path that, you know, I just I wasn't using. Yeah, I want to pull panels if they're not, if this is how they're going to work. Okay. I mean, I, if they're broken, I have no problem with that unless we should fix them instead. So lacking that, lacking enough information to make that decision. I would not say rip them out first. I would say leave them in until we can, you know, make a proper diagnosis. And if it's terminal, we can pull them. But I don't want that to be the default. Well, I don't want to leave something that's broken until before that I can't pull later. Well, I'm saying we don't have to make the decision right now. We can postpone it. Okay. There are a couple but weeks when I, patching. when I was asking for information to make a better decision, you were just telling me that was long ago and you don't know what's going on. So I also didn't say that I wasn't going to look it up. I can go look at the old BA I created. Great. Sounds like a plan. Okay. But again, not a priority. So it's not going to happen, you know, in the next week or so. That's fine. The question is, are we going to get to these before four? And I mean, right now I feel like the long pull with patching because I know that I have a large amount of work in there and I, and I don't have a end. I think when I start seeing the end of the tunnel, then it might, uh, the end of the tunnel on patching, then it might turn into, okay, who else has things that are longer than X? Because mm -hmm. um, right now I'm measuring patching in weeks, which I assume none of you guys have any single issue that's longer than weeks. And if you do, well, I know closer, I think. Or if you do, let me know. I'm just assuming that I have the longest one still. So, uh, yeah. So there's certainly time left to look at smaller issues, assuming these are smaller issues. So, there's time. All right. Can patch sweet tag burn integration test is failing 6675. That is part of patching. That'll probably be one of the last issues that I get to because it requires all the other patching work. So that'll be a great place to finish up. Okay. Uh, 6843, Wix toolset DNC host generator runs twice during the completion yep. of WPFDA. Well, Pre-GA check. Yep. Go poke .net, make sure it's all cool. Um, include remote payloads. We just talked about this one. I'm assuming you're yep. going to work on that one. Uh, 6847, Wix XE. Convert ignores commented inner text. Sounds like a good thing to fix before 4.0 ships. It should be straightforward for anybody that wants to pick that up. V4 bundle can fail to copy bundle when starting registration session. 6.8.4.8. Sean? Yeah. All right. That's a yes that's for, right? Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a yes. My name is Sean. All right. Uh, <laughs> burn detects related bundles twice on x86 machines. 6.8.4.9. Yeah, I need to do that. All right. Windows installer validation target runs twice. Uh, 6853. That's another MS build one. Should get done before 4.0. Update Wix standard BA themes to use install folder instead of install folder. That's the caps difference. 6858. Did we talked about that weeks ago, I feel like. Yeah, that was pretty hard. Yeah, I guess we should change the title of it. I'm going to do sure. that one. Um, layout attempts to send messages to elevated engine. Oh, that's interesting. 6871. Yeah, I need to do that too. Okay. That's wow. kind of scary, isn't it? Well, if it attempts yeah. and fails, that's okay. But <laughs> well, I, well, not yeah, okay. I, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some. I'm gonna have to look at three and see whether I messed something up or whether it's always been doing that. Interesting. Because if it's always been cleaning packages as part of the layout, then that could have been interesting. <laughs> that sounds really weird. That no, it should not have been doing that. Uh, <laughs> but pretty clearly, I can't. I can't imagine that I would have caused that. I don't know. It'll be interesting to look into. Yeah, could have been one of the big dumps we got when we started going complicated uh, interactions. We started getting from like when Studio was doing very intricate 
layouts between things. Anywho, all right, we got to the end. 10, 20, I might make it after all. All right, so that is all the four issues. I think we are, we know where we're at and what we're going through there. Like I said, I'm the long pole. I'm gonna fill a little space. If you have questions, oh, when would a slash layout ever be lay elevated? Uh, Jacob asked whenever they launch it from an elevated command prompt is the big one. Yeah, but it still wouldn't have an elevate engine to talk to. Like the BA would have to explicitly elevate. No, that would be just one time. process. That would be very weird. Here, let me elevate and then do a layout. That's so weird. Anyway, uh, yeah. Depending doesn't... where you want to write the layout to. It... Uh... Although, from what I remember, in V3, if the elevated engine was available, it would do the layout stuff through the elevated engine. Maybe for exactly the case that Bob just said. If you want to write to an elevated location and you launched it elevated. But the whole, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend uh, to remember that whole scenario. It would be nice. You should be able to lay out a bundle to an elevated location if you launch it elevated. And but it shouldn't prompt for elevation to do that. Probably not. Probably not. I'll buy that. This could also be hangovers from early attempts in Burn, just for history case, that we tried to um, launch unelevated as unelevated all the time. Right. So that could be a thing too. All right. I've been I feeling wish that it worked. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. I don't know anymore. All right. Um, all right. So I'm going to fill some time, see if people have other questions, things that are going on in their, their brain. Ron, I know I've queued up a bunch of, you have a bunch of emails that nobody else has answered that I need to go poke at. Um, I've just been trying to get my head wrapped around patching, but I will still. thought I'd have some time this morning. Didn't quite go that way. Anyway, Ron, I know you have a bunch of stuff out there. Want to go get to that. Um, other people, I think we're all caught up. And that means so, that if there's anything new... Actually, for the, if we have a little time, can we talk about what you're doing for the cleaning and like automatic cleaning and the command line stuff automatic and the build scripts? Cleaning. Oh, um, sure, like, real quick. Can you change it instead of, or could you enhance it to where like, if you build Wix, it automatically calls the clean script for the, or it automatically deletes the NuGet packages from the cache for all of its dependencies. So like instead of the API build command cleaning itself out of the cache, like make it to where if you build the Wix layer, before it does anything, it wipes the NuGet cache and then it'll restore from the build folder always so instead of only cleaning the segments uh dependence uh nuget cache clean all of its dependence from the nuget cache and so that way you don't know you don't have to remember what order or what the dependents are so like when you ran into that problem when you tried to do the ball extension yeah. and the sdk was cached yeah it would have been cool if the ball extension would have cleaned the SDK. But if the Wix layer segment had cleaned, the right thing would have happened as well. Because it would have, it would have either clean out the cache and not put itself in there or put itself back in there for the testing purposes, which I think is what the Wix segment would have done, and everything would have worked out. I don't know that I have to clean all the dependents, well, for, like for the ball extension, yep. let's say you changed, well, I'm not sure that would always work, but I guess if you think it will work, then. I haven't hit a case where it hasn't. The, the issue I had here was that uh, I was in the setup where I knew I had done it, and I had been in the API where I knew I had done it, and I thought I had added the clean to the Wix segment, but I hadn't which now looking back, of course I haven't because it's the last one I want to do after I was kind of playing around with it, getting it working. But I think so far it's been holding together for me. When I've had to rebuild the API, 
when I cleaned it, it cleaned itself, built its stuff. Then I went and built the things that depended on it, and it worked out. Now, I, I so far it's worked out. There are cases where it might not if we get intricate paths through, like if Wix needs burn and burn, then use API and you rebuild API, but you don't repeal burn, then you jump over to Wix. That certainly can get into the mix, but I don't think we have any comp. I haven't hit any complications in that. We have to build both API and burn to have the right thing happen in Wix. So if in that case, then it would have to start cleaning all of its other dependencies. Yes. Or if we could get the whole build multi-proc again, it would be just build it. I still think it'd be longer than iterating in one second, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fact that I was able to integrate in the Wix and the setup segment when I was kind of playing with that and having the setup clean itself, I was like, that actually got, or was it tool? I forget. There was a loop where I got into, I was like, yeah, okay, this isn't so bad. I can actually operate just within this segment and the, the speed was back. I didn't have to build, in that case, I didn't have to build lots of native code, which is definitely slower than everything else. Um, yeah. And then the tests, some of the tests can be really slow. So anyway, um, I th it's been holding together so far. I'll definitely keep it in mind, but I haven't had to yet. Uh, but it could, if we ever get in the case where there are multiple segments that combine that have to be updated to get this one segment done. So far, that's been avoided. But it could happen. All right. Walk the whole tree clearing the cache, then walk the tree building. Well, I mean, that's kind of, we, we kind of do that now with, that's what dev build does. It cleans the whole cache, cleans everything out, and then it goes and builds everything. Uh, and on my machine, that takes like 14, 15 minutes. Um, so if you want to try to build just one segment, you do a little bit less. And so far, I've been able to get away with it with just building a segment. Um, and I think the clean pattern's working. I've gone back and forth on command line, the way the command line should work. Um, because way, 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 way back when in Office, we had the difference was if you ran a batch file or a command, then it would do an incremental. And if you added the word full at the end, then it would clean and do an incremental. So I, I kind of went back and forth between should it clean automatically or should it do incremental automatically? And I've kind of gone back and forth. I think in the end, I've decided that um, the full is better because in the case of the segments, you're generally building the whole thing and you're better off cleaning and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, so I have not gone with the pattern off as using full, but I went back and forth with it a few times. Anyway, internal things, if you look at the commits around the batch files, which to Bob's point, if we could just get everything to be parallel build, that would be great. The issue is if we want to try to use the same NuGet packages that we're publishing in the same build, the MS build, we have to restore at least that. We have to restore between those layers, which has been the root of it. Which is why the whole micro repo was a concept which had different levels of complications. Um, our process on top of it. Anyway. All right. I've filled a lot of time. I feel the questions have all been about the things that I've been doing. Let's see. So as stated before, I think we're on track for two weeks, which would be September 8th. Uh, hopefully more bugs will be solved. Although maybe not so much in my world since I'm now in patching and they may not fall until they all fall in my case. We'll see. Um, and yeah. Let's see, so two weeks, same time, same place. We do this all again, and yeah, I think that's it. Anything else? I think that's it. All right. Uh, Ron, yeah, if you send another email, Wix devs, I will get to him today or tomorrow. I have a tournament, soccer tournament tomorrow to go to, but I will try to find a slot in between all those things. So uh, until then, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, you guys have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.